So we're going to talk about the kinetic molecular theory and gas pressure in this lecture. So very quick, basic idea, some of the stuff you already know. We'll start with the kinetic molecular theory. So this is based on the behavior of gases. Okay. Um, it's only a model though, so it's just an approximation. We have to make some assumptions about gases that may or may not be true in the real world. So one thing, uh, we say gases are made of particles. That's true. We have evidence for that. Okay? Um, we assume that the volume of these particles is zero, which that's not really true because the particles do have some volume. It's just so small and the particles are so far apart from each other that the volume, the size of the gas particle doesn't really matter. Uh, particles are in constant motion. We know that. Right? They're, they're, they're moving because of their kinetic energy. They collide because they're moving, because there's space between them. They're going to collide with each other, and they're going to collide with surfaces. We're going to assume that they don't attract or repel each other, these particles. That's, not also, that's also not exactly true, because sometimes particles exhibit intermolecular forces, and those particles would be maybe attracted to each other or repel each other and that's going to affect their behavior but for the purposes of understanding the relationships between gas particles we're going to pretend that they don't interfere with each other okay the other thing that we want to remember is that kinetic energy is proportional to kelvin temperature as a matter of fact if you take your celsius temperature and you add 273 to it you'll have your kelvin temperature and kelvin temperature is an absolute measurement of kinetic energy okay so that's what it is that's why we say that temperature uh, is measuring kinetic energy not heat it's because of the kelvin scale that we can say that and since the kelvin scale and the celsius scale are the same thing only just 273 degrees apart um, this this works really well okay so what do we know about gases? We know they have no distinct shape or volume, right? So they fit in, in they fill any container you put them in. They're easily compressed because there's all that space in between them. And so we can squash them down. And if we squash them down enough, they get too close and they become a liquid, right? That's, that's how you, that's what pressurized gases do. They turn into liquids and they will mix completely with other gases. If we put two gases in the same area, they'll mix completely so that they're uniformly mixed. In other words, homogeneous okay and gases exert pressure on their surroundings because collisions okay gas pressure is the sum total of all simultaneous collisions of gas particles and surfaces so you're sitting in a room right now there's air in that room that air is made of gas particles those gas particles are moving and they're colliding with your skin a whole bunch of them at the same time that's pressure you're feeling atmospheric pressure Okay. Now, you don't notice it because we evolved in that pressure, and so we don't notice it. It's just it's what the way things are. But believe me, you'd notice it if it wasn't there. You would notice the lack of pressure. So pressure is just all these collisions at the same time. When particles collide with something, they give energy to that surface, and if you add up all that energy, you get gas pressure. Okay? So we can measure gas pressure with this rather interesting-looking thing. This is called a barometer. And it was invented by a guy named Torricelli in 1643. It measures atmospheric pressure. That gray coloring that you see in the picture here is mercury, liquid mercury. So you take a tube, you fill it with mercury, you turn it upside down in a dish full of mercury, and mercury is very heavy, it's very dense, so it falls, but it only falls as far down as the atmospheric pressure will allow it to. It'll fall until the atmosphere, which is pushing down on the surface, uh, can hold it up. And as it turns out, at sea level, like where we are in Madison, uh, the column of mercury that would, would be supported by the atmosphere is 760 millimeters. So this is less than a meter. It's about three quarters of a meter in height. But that's still pretty tall for mercury. Okay. So atmospheric pressure, then, is all the air being pulled towards the earth by gravity. So down here at sea level, there's more air because of gravity than there is if we go high up in a mountain, right? As we go higher up, there's less air because it's all down here at sea level, right? So we say the air is thinner. That just means there's fewer particles up there. Well, if there's fewer particles, there's going to be less pressure. Now that also is affected by weather conditions. Obviously, we've, you've heard of things like a low pressure front or a high pressure front coming through. Um, 
air moves in very interesting ways. And if you're interested in that stuff, you should take the earth science class because they talk about weather and how that all works in weather. Uh, pressure can be measured in different units. So the most common unit is millimeters of mercury. Hg is mercury, okay? Um, since mercury is used in manometers and barometers, so we use it, we measure in millimeters, that's the most common way. Um, another way of saying millimeters of mercury is tor, and that's actually named after Torricelli, the guy that created the barometer. It's the same number, it just has a different unit as millimeters of mercury. Uh, in this country, we typically use something called standard atmosphere, which is abbreviated ATM. And it, it's an arbitrary number. It's not something that was, was reasoned out or experimented out. Um, someone at one point just said, okay, sea level, this is where my lab is, so I'm going to say the pressure here is one, one atmosphere. And if it goes up or down, we're going to relate it back to sea level. And so sea level pressure is one atmosphere. And then the SI standard unit, the metric system, they use the Pascal. And Pascal is in, equal to something called a Newton per meter squared, but you don't need to really need to worry about that. That's just what a Pascal is. It's related to physics, um, to force, which is measured in Newtons, and distance. So it's the number of how much force is required to, to uh, press on a square meter of, of space. It's not really, that's, that part's not really important, okay? Um, but what that means is that we have some relative uh, relationships that we can use. So one atmosphere, one standard atmosphere, is the same as 760 millimeters of mercury, which is the same as 760 torr, which is the same as 101,325 pascals or 101.325 kilopascals. You can convert, and we'll talk about conversions later, between any pressure unit just by knowing the last line on this screen right here. If you know that, you can convert from any pressure unit to any other pressure unit. But we'll look at that later on, okay? Now that's about it as far as pressure goes. Now we have to figure out how is that related to the other gas variables that we're gonna learn about.